I felt like I needed to uh, communicate. Let's say I wasn't happy with who I was, where I was from. I was an only child. And I found myself kind of lonely sometimes. I basically looked to graffiti as something I wanted to become a part of. The energy was good. I could create a new identity, portray myself as that person. I came up with the name Futura 2000, loosely inspired by 2001 A Space Odyssey, which came out in 1968. I was 13. Futura, the typeface, the car, the blender, the vacuum cleaner. Futura 2000 just seemed the right thing for me to be. I began tagging that up. I did create an identity around Futura 2000. No one necessarily knew me as Lenny. No one cared to know me as Lenny. I wasn't very important as Lenny, but I somehow gained more importance, not even prestige, but just personal respect as this uh, pseudonym, anonymous uh, alter ego. That's what I mean, alter ego. is really short, sharp shock of who you are. And it's easier to get that around and get many of them around. So it's about coverage. The analogy of a dog pissing and marking his territory, in a sense, it's kind of true. I mean, you mark your territory and then you're, you're happy to go back and check the scent. Every piece came from tagging. Like the piece is nothing more than a fat tag with outline and designs. Tagging's the lowest common denominator of a piece. Like a, a piece takes a few hours, like a tag takes a few seconds. But um, you should try and apply as much skill into your tag as you're going to do into a piece. It's in your mind. And uh, sometimes uh, 24 hours a day, you're thinking of it, or doing something, or what can I do tonight, or what shall I make a piece, or shall we go out and bomb somewhere? Uh, it was just for fun, you know. Mostly not on uh, any new kind of fresh wall. Except public transport. That's, that's always possible. Always. It was uh, looking every second of uh, putting your name somewhere. And it, it's still fun to do it, you know. After all these years, it's uh, still funny. That's so strange. I finished about 20,000 cans. And that's no bullshit. They're cleaning a lot nowadays, but I'm sure that in 2000 uh, I'll still see some rhyme tags. I don't have any preferences or scruples, you know. Like, um, I mean, like I love looking at buildings, you know. But uh, that will not stop me uh, if I had the chance to to put a nice tag on on one. That's stupid, like to make a tag on the shirt or. Uh, I prefer like go go on the police station and make tag over there. For me, I take graffiti as an art, as an expressing of yourself. And when you do historical building, when you when you build something, and it's beautiful, I think that's the same, you know, because you put something in, in, from from you into it. We're in the mid midway between our form and totally vandalism. This is too human. This kind of stuff. The city, even before graffiti, Roma, it was crowded of names. Even if it's a political you know, group, or even if his, his girlfriend name, there will be always a, a, a guy who, who would start drawing his name. Two years ago, I, I went to London for Christmas and um, I walked down Shaftesbury Avenue and like two days later, like I walked through it and I see Dwayne tags and a few other local things. So now I know that some guy from Sweden passed through Shaftesbury Avenue between this and this date using this and this color and like uh, where it's placed and how it's placed and how big it is or how it's shaped gives you an, an idea of the movements he had to do to make it, you know. So the placement of the tag is really subtle, there's subtleties in it as well as the thing of dangerous places, harder places, tags by police stations and risky, risky things like that. It is a minor contribution to the overall scene, and in some senses, you know, it doesn't look very appealing. But like I say, at the same time, there's nothing like a truck or a gate or some particular wall that just has nothing but tags, nothing very beautiful. It's a real snapshot of what the movement really is all about. 
and that is individuals writing their names on walls, expressing who they are in the most minute way, their tags. I wanted to be somebody, not to be a pop star or to be a big film star or to be anything big, but just a little somebody. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't for doing that. I would not have chased that fucking rainbow, do you know what I mean? You know, I was Goldie before the goal. I was painting, I was Goldie, I was going out there painting with walls, you know what I mean? I was, I was getting known for painting. You want to put your name up to be recognised, somebody reads that fucking name and says, I know that kid. You, you saw sort of like, think these, this person has more to them as an individual. You build up a sub-character. Goldie's Goldie's right there. Me, I'm here. You make that character. That's what graffiti did for people. It gave people confidence. Some of the biggest writers, the most prolific writers I ever met, I'm like, hello, fucking hell. Is that the guy? Some white kid, scraggly hair. So it's almost like um, I have agents working for me and I put them in different places around the city and they just, they just stand there and pose for me. And everyone walks by and they say, yeah, that's, that's me, that's Prime. You never lose that. What you do lose is time in life where you can actually do that. That's what you do lose. I am a person in society. I go to work, I contribute. I pay my taxes. I'm a kind of like regular kind of person. I do all that shit that everybody else does. I go to work for one reason and one reason only, to get paid. My time outside of that is very valuable to me and I want to enjoy myself. And one of my hobbies is doing graffiti. Everyone's got a tag and if you've got ten tags on a shop shutter or on the side of a wall, none of those tags are really going to stand out unless it's somebody who's famous. So I kind of like I didn't want a tag, I wanted, I wanted like a symbol, something a little bit stronger than a tag. So you can just catch a glimpse of that and that's it, you, it, you, you recognise it, you know it's there, you've seen it and it's like yes, there it is, there's another one. And uh, it works. And I like, I like walking around and seeing my tag there and seeing it there and seeing one from back in 89 there and it's nice. People come up to me and say, yeah, I didn't realise you did that. It's like, just a little ego boost. It's like, yeah. There's not really many places in London you can go without seeing one of our <laughs> traps. Um, they're, they're everywhere. Once you stop, no one is talking, you, uh, talking about you after a couple of months. You're dead, actually. So that's what you actually keeps, uh, that keeps you active. I mean, you have to do more, you have to do more, so people still speak about you. If you stop, you get, you, you're forgotten after a couple of years, you're forgotten, unless you were special. No, I don't get fame, I don't get paid. I have to do it once in a while, I have an idea and I have to do it. I'm not feeling confident if I, if I have an idea and I haven't done it. Because I'm always in fear if I have an idea, someone might, might do it before me. I was never concerned, never concerned about getting paid for it. All I wanted was Pain. I'll be honest with you, I don't have tons of money, you know, from it, and it was just a, a, an ego trip, a fame thing that, you know, hey, that's me. And during the course of time, what it did do is make a lot of people know me, and know of me, or maybe know me personally, or they're on. Uh, but it kept me busy, you know, that would be the answer, it kept me out of trouble. When I was on my own and I didn't have anything better to do, I could always have my pens and my paint to fall back on. I could sit in my house at two o'clock in the morning and say I'm going out for four hours. I didn't need to have company, I didn't need to have friends, I didn't need to have nothing. I just went out and done something that was instant satisfaction, free of charge. I was out there every single day without fail, tagging, bombing, whatever you want to call it, I was out there doing it. I used to get night buses to the far reaches of London, get off the night bus and walk home. Eight, nine, ten miles, I would walk home and I would absolutely write on everything that was in my way. As a young person, I, f I was shy and I didn't really maybe communicate with other people on a great level. But as I became well known for graffiti, when I met people that maybe I may not have had a lot to say to in the past, I met them as Drax. They already knew kind of what I was all about and that I was prolific and that I was a dedicated writer and they had that element of respect for me. I don't want any fame, I don't want any exposure, but my, my name, the persona that I invented for myself in the graffiti world, I wanted that to be famous and I still do yearn for that.
the one thing about graffiti that I think that people lost along the way is the respect for it and, and fellow people doing it. Other writers will, that aren't as well known will go over a famous person to make a name for themselves. When you do stuff like that, you show no consideration for the guy who done the art. That's suckerness, you know? You're not getting nowhere by come writing your name in somebody's piece, you know? When you could be home practicing on paper what you're gonna do the next time when you get bigger, when you get old enough to do a piece. But the bottom line is, if you never have a writer who thinks he is nasty as the next man, then you ain't gonna have writing because you always got somebody who wanna prove that they're as good as the next guy who's doing a piece. The spots I choose mostly are spots which are seen by many people but that doesn't mean that I do them because of the people seeing them because it's just because I myself pass those spots often. It fills most of my time which I am awake. I paint alone mostly so I have the possibility to think. With every painting, there are thoughts connected. I got used to just getting my cans on my own and just walk outside in the night, even if it's cold, if it's raining. Other people are just sitting at home and maybe watching TV, fucking their wives, just doing stuff that everybody does, and I'm able to express myself. I want to be known in a hundred years only a couple of names will be remembered. I want to be one of them. always going to be what you say, a true legendary writer like me, myself, and I, who was the one and only member of the Fantastic Partners crew who really made what this is now, you know what I'm saying, from lettering to designs and everything else, you know. Now, you got these dudes who do these big productions to make themselves look good as a writer because, you know, it's better without doing it on the train when you got walls, but back in the days, if you didn't have whole cars on the subway and plenty of them, you was considered straight up toy. What is it, top to bottom? They wanted to see this traveling around on the system so they could point to it and say, that's my work, that's my tag. I used to love to see your morning strap hangers, reading their newspaper, drinking a cup of coffee, and all of a sudden this train comes rolling into the station and they glance up, you know, sometimes you see them drop their cup of coffee and the newspaper and then you see this whole thing of college and pulling into the station. A train yard is something like a playground for you. You enter it and it has certain rules. It has a certain atmosphere. We know where to go, how to go, so we never get really busted. You don't see yourself as a criminal. You just see yourself like as a very slick, uh, cool, clever boy who's tried to give his art somewhere to the public and gets away with it. You know, like a fighter who wants to hunt a lion for the first time, you got to prove his, his maturity. It's just like the whole action. It's like an act, sort of like the lost adventure you can get in the city. We found out with this research that the public were very 
concern about this type of damage. In addition to that, of course, London Underground, I think it was costing them, when we first started, about £2 million a year. That went up to £4 million, although it's decreased subsequently. No, like the whole town was sleeping and you went through the maddest night, you know. A few people have done that side, a few people have done that thing there. But the boy in the middle keeping dog, everyone's doing it. Next minute all I hear is run, so run. It's just good doing it all together. It's just a good thing that like, uh, you'd have to do it to understand properly. Uh, British Council Police, they're behind, they're just parked up behind the bus. Everyone was crouching down and hiding under the seats. And I remember Zonk, he was actually ducking down. He paid the man like that. <laughs> paid the man. <laughs> like, I was upstairs <laughs> shitting myself. What I come away with is like, like what I've experienced. And it's like, that's worth it for me. You know, no money can pay for that all night out. When we get old, some experiences I've had, I'll never forget, you know what I mean? That's the good thing about it. Males of a particular age group tend to form their own sub subcultures with their own identified norms and rules. They then gain credibility by obeying those subcultural norms and rules. Once the offender gets involved in the subculture, he is then put under enormous pressure by his peers to commit offences, or wants to impress his peers by committing lots of offences or dangerous offences. We've had four deaths on the underground system in seven years. We don't want to see any more. There's a very, very small minority. These are the ones that do the mural work, and they normally do it for self actualization They do it because they like to see their own work on the trains. The taggers, 
I think they're in it in it for the fun. But it's fun that can do do them an enormous amount of damage. Well, I've been caught for criminal damage about ten times. In total, I've done about a year and a half in prison for graffiti on two separate occasions. Graffiti is always on my brain. I'm always doing outlines in prison. I just practice and practice and practice. I send letters to my friends with outlines on. In a way, I feel stupid for going to prison for it because you guys prison for graffiti. If you've got a recidivist offender that's perhaps committed a hundred thousand pounds worth of damage and continues to commit this type of offence then we look towards detention, not for rehabilitation, but literally con to control that individual. It's not stopping me. Prison doesn't stop me. I don't think anyone can stop me. My mum and dad can't stop me, so I don't see no one else is going to stop me. Gary started doing graffiti when he was about 12 years old. It was a passion to him. That It wasn't a passing phase. It wasn't something that was going to just finish overnight. He was totally involved, 100% committed. He actually showed me this album and he presented it to me. And he said to me, um, Mum, he said, is, is art a crime? And he showed me this album, I'm going, oh, you know. And then he proceeded to sort of take me through his album of artists and saying to me, I mean, what do you think of these? And I had to say, I said, well, I think they're brilliant. It did change him, but it was all a part of him growing up as well. Um, I think he found something which made him in himself just feel really good and to be part of something. Steam, calm and rays um, left and they went off um, to paint a train, basically. They were spotted by the, the track men um, who started shouting and yelling at them. They started to run, they started to panic, like, let's get out of here, we don't want to be caught. So they started to run up the embankment, which was safety, out of the yard. But when they were halfway up the embankment, two officers were running down, chased them onto the lines. Gary um, took it upon himself to run right out into the middle of the the lines and that he slipped and fell. All of us had fallen on the tracks. Most of us have had an electric shock at some time. Um, and it wasn't until the next morning when his mum called me up and said that he had passed away that, that we knew, you know. The day that Gary was buried was a very, well, it was a very strange day. It was just like a, a writer's convention. I mean, so many of the writers came from all over and it was respect. Sometimes when you're walking down a tunnel or you're, you're climbing, climbing up into a yard or down into a yard and at any moment you could slip and die or you could get electrocuted or a work train could come, you're obviously conscious that you could die, but it, it's not something you're thinking about. Graffiti for me gives me a very warm feeling. I like it. And I think the sad thing is that not many people actually do want to understand. They just see it as vandalism. At the end of the day, I lost my son through his art. And I miss him. I think about him every day. It's not a day that doesn't go by. And um, you just, you just miss him.